Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to Allen Arena for the 2024 President's Convocation at Lipscomb University. We are glad and very thankful that you could join us today as Lipscomb begins its 134th year as a learning community. Today we celebrate the beginning of a new year, a year of growing and flourishing in learning, service, and community at Lipscomb University and at Lipscomb Academy. We will now begin with a traditional academic procession. And a procession like this really dates back to the world's earliest universities of the 12th and 13th centuries. Leading our procession today in carrying the Lipscomb Mace is C.J. Jim Coley. C.J. is president of the Lipscomb Academy Student Government Association. The Lipscomb University mace that he will be carrying was sculpted from a fallen elm tree that grew on David Lipscomb's farm. One in a line of trees that to this day run through Bison Square. Please welcome the academic procession led by C.J. Jim Coley and the Nashville Pipes and Drums. Join me in welcoming representatives of the Lipscomb University Board of Trustees, also the Lipscomb Executive Leadership Team, the Senior Leadership Team, the Academic Leadership Team, and the Lipscomb Academy Leadership Team. Registrar Sandra Hood, representatives of the Lipscomb University faculty.
And now entering the arena, today's program participant. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the 18th president of Lipscomb University, Dr. Candace McQueen. Let's give a round of applause to the Nashville Pipes and Drums for their extraordinary participation in our procession. You may be seated. Now to begin today's program, please welcome the chairman of the Lipscomb Board of Trustees, Dick Coward, who will be followed by Lipscomb University's Interim Executive Vice President, Brian Mast. This month, this month, the world was feeded to a quadrennial spectacle, the Olympics. Paris was gracious, historic, and picturesque host and fortunately, the U.S. team did quite well. The Olympic teams came from over 200 countries, and there were over 10,000 athletes. This academic year, Lipscomb University and Academy will host over 6,000 students. It will include Lipscomb's largest university freshman class ever, its most diverse student body. It will have students from 50 states and two U.S. territories, and from 36 other countries. Many of you are returning. Others are here for the first time, including my grandson, Cale, who is a new student at Lipscomb Academy. Welcome, Cale. Hey, uh... As a good student, I researched the internet for prayers by Olympic athletes, coaches, and organizers, and found some common themes. One, unity and diversity. Number two, courage and faith to overcome fear. Number three, the plea to perform one's best with strength and conviction. Number four, the joy and the inspiration of the occasion. And number five, conviction to persevere with purpose without regard to adversity. As we commence this new academic year, I thought these themes were equally applicable to what we will experience this year. And so if you will pray with me, I would like to ask the Lord to bless you for this upcoming year. Lord, thank you for this great and diverse student body. Bless these students with new friendships and with unity with one another. Let each student befriend someone he or she doesn't know, and let that person become a friend for life. Lord, we pray that these students will perform with courage and without fear. Whatever is the valley, you are with them. Help them to prepare 
to do their best and to trust you in the outcome. Lord, we give these students, please give these students the courage and conviction to participate to their fullest. Your spirit is their gift. They are your light. May they glow brightly. Lord, give us joy and inspiration today and throughout the year. Thank you for the staff that is prepared for this year. Thank you for the faculty that will advise and nurture throughout the year. And let us intentionally express to you and to them and to one another in both words and deeds our appreciation. Lord, we know this year will include difficulties and hardships. Prepare us to persevere with purpose. We are your thundering herd and the challenges of the world will not stop us. Lord, give us these blessings. Give us your hope. Thank you for your son and your grace. In your son's name we pray, amen. Good morning. It's my pleasure to welcome you to Convocation. To our university students, most Tuesdays at this time, we will be meeting right here for our weekly university chapel known as The Gathering. It's a unique and meaningful experience, and I can't wait to welcome you to it starting next week. But today is different. Today we have the wonderful opportunity to gather as an entire campus community. Students from Lipscomb Academy all the way through to our doctoral programs, along with our faculty, staff, and friends. This is a moment for us to come together to anticipate the year ahead and to seek God's guidance and blessing for what's to come. This morning, you'll hear from colleagues and classmates and I hope it will be a time for you to reflect on what lies ahead and to be reminded of the goodness of God, who was, who is, and who is to come. Let's encourage one another today, tomorrow, and throughout this year to depend on him for everything we need. Before we proceed, just a quick note for our university students. At the end of convocation, you'll have the opportunity to scan for chapel credit. When we're dismissed, please make sure you have your I attended app open, press the scan me button, and look for a staff member to scan your phone as you exit the arena. Once again, welcome to convocation. Let's make the most of this time together as we embrace on a new and exciting academic year. Now please stand and join me in the reading of Lipscomb University's Centering Core. Everyone will read together the words in gold and I will read the text in white. Join me now. We believe in God the Father who created the heavens and the earth making all human beings as divine image bearers. We violated the image of God in others and ourselves and abandoned our role in the creation. In response, God chose Israel as a blessing and light to all peoples in order to renew the creation. We believe in God the Son, Jesus the Messiah, who is fully human and fully God. Baptized in water and anointed with the Spirit, he proclaimed the reign of God preaching good news to the poor and brokenhearted, announcing forgiveness by calling all to repent and believe the good news and commissioning his followers to make disciples, baptizing them into the communion of the Father, Son, and Spirit, and teaching them to embrace this new way of life. Jesus was crucified, giving his life for the sin of the world. God raised Jesus from the dead, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from dead to eternal life and inaugurating new creation. God enthroned Jesus as the Lord of creation. 
We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, the giver and renewer of life, whom the Father, through the Son, poured out upon us, enabling us to love God and neighbor, and binding us together with all believers in the church, the body of Christ, and together we give thanks at the table of the Lord. The Spirit spoke through the prophets and apostles and inspired scripture to equip us for every good work. The Spirit empowers us to witness to Christ as Lord and Savior and to work for justice and peace as we seek to live holy and joyful lives. We believe in the resurrection of the dead, wait for God's new heaven and new earth, and pray, come, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Please be seated. Now, Lipscomb University's Sanctuary will lead us in singing 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship Him. Psalms 52, 8 through 9. 
But I am like an olive tree, flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. For what you have done, I will always praise you in the presence of your faithful people. And I will hope in your name, for your name is good. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> um, for those who do not know me yet, my name is Shanae Anderson, and I'm thrilled to serve you as your student government president this year. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Whether this is a brand new chapter for you or another year in your college experience, we're all here together, ready to make this year unforgettable. As we embark on this journey, I'm reminded of how much Lipscomb has helped me grow and flourish during my time here. When I first arrived on campus, I was skeptical of all that college had for me. I was hesitant, unsure, and honestly a little overwhelmed. Everything was new and unfamiliar. The people, the classes, the expectations, and I wondered if I ever would find my place or make my mark here at Lipscomb. In fact, if you had told me three years ago today that I'd be standing here talking to all 3,000 of you, I truly would not have believed you. The idea of stepping into a leadership role, speaking in front of all you guys, and putting myself in front of so many people, making myself so vulnerable, it sounded like something other people would do, but definitely not me. But I had to learn that growth doesn't happen when you're comfortable. It happens when you challenge yourself and you take that first uneasy step. For me, that meant getting involved, speaking up in class, and stepping into a leadership role on student government, even when it scared me. I had to be willing to get uncomfortable so that God could place me exactly where he wanted me to be. Looking back, I can see that every challenge, every moment of discomfort was preparing me for the place that God has me today. My challenge to each of you this year, I encourage you to push beyond your comfort zones. If you've never joined a club, attend an event, make it a goal to do so. Reach out to someone and start a conversation. Take on a leadership role, even if it feels uncomfortable at first. I challenge you to take at least one step that scares you or feels unfamiliar. Embrace the opportunities to learn, grow, and connect with others. It's in these moments of moving beyond what feels safe that we truly begin to flourish. As we grow together, it's important to remember that we're not doing it alone. We are a part of a community that has a rich history of fostering growth and connections. In fact, this year marks the 100th anniversary of our Student Government Association on this campus. For 100 years, SGA has been helping students like me find our place, step into leadership, and make a difference on this campus. As we celebrate this milestone, Let's honor the legacy of those who came before us by continuing to grow and flourish in all that we do. Let's make this year one of incredible growth, transformation, and success. Thank you. Now please welcome the Lipscomb University Gospel Choir, who will lead us in another song of worship. Good morning, Lipscomb. How are you this morning? Amen. The song we're getting ready to sing is a song Dr. Randy Gill was singing this song during a faculty meeting, a hymn of the church called Revive Us Again. And I heard it and fell in love with it. I had heard it growing up, but not that often. So when he sang that, I said, we have to do a version of that. So the song we're getting ready to sing is our prayer for our university this year, that we would be revived by the presence of God that we would fall in love with him afresh, and that we would be invigorated to live out our vocations and our calling for his glory. So pray for us as we come with this selection. Son of thy love, but Jesus. 
Psalm 92, 12 through 15. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there's no wickedness in him. Good morning. As we gather today at the start of a new academic year, I want to welcome each one of you on this journey of learning. There's something truly special about this moment. There's a sense of renewal, a new beginning, and a world of possibilities before us, with every new day offering us the chance to grow, to learn, and to use what we've learned to make a difference in the world. 
In some circles of academics, it can be all too easy and perhaps even popular to adopt a stance of cynicism. This mindset, while seemingly intellectual and discerning, is often the very enemy of growth and of learning. Cynicism closes off possibilities. It stifles creativity and it turns us away from the pursuit of new ideas and deeper understanding. It is hope, not cynicism, that opens our hearts and our minds to the transformative power of education, the reason that we are all here. So today, I want to start our academic year with a charge that is focused on Romans 15, 13. This is my prayer for you all this year. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. As the Apostle Paul reminds us, it is through trust in God that we are filled with hope hope that is so abundant that it overflows into every aspect of our lives. Philosopher Ernst Bloch once observed, hope is in fact a revolutionary act because it pushes against the boundaries of the possible and it transforms the future. Hope is the light that guides us through the challenges and the uncertainties of our academic journey it's what gives us the strength to press on when we're struggling to understand and to learn. It gives us the strength to ask bold questions, to pursue knowledge with passion. And even when the path is uncertain, when we can't find the answers, it helps us keep going forward. Hope is not just a word. It is a living, breathing force that infuses everything that we do. It's the belief that our work, our studies, our every effort, what we're doing here at this university, at this academy, that it can and that it will make a difference, not just for ourselves, but for this world that we are called to love and to serve. The theologian Jürgen Moltmann reminds us, hope alone is to be called realistic. Hope alone is to be called realistic because it alone takes seriously the possibilities with which all reality is fraught. This kind of hope that sees the possibilities, this kind of hope inspires us as academics, as learners, to reach higher, to dream bigger, and to look beyond the challenges of today and into the possibilities of tomorrow. So as we move through this new academic year, let us carry with us the powerful knowledge that hope is our greatest ally as Christian scholars. It empowers us to turn obstacles into opportunities, to transform our ideas into reality, and to contribute to a future that is brighter and filled with endless possibilities. Together, let us be the bearers of hope this year, not just in our studies, but in everything that we do. May God bless each and every one of you this year as we begin this new year together. Thank you. And now, please welcome our Lipscomb University president, Dr. Candace McQueen, to the stage. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. It's fantastic to be here with you, and it's an honor to start the year in this place with you. Um, I love seeing your faces, hearing your voices, and Dr. Howard, I will never forget seeing your face up here leading the gospel choir. Uh, you're amazing, and I love the spirit and the energy that is in this community. I want to say a special thank you to our board and to our leadership team, for our faculty, for our students, our staff, for making this the special place that it is. And today I want to say a special thank you to our student leaders, 
I have watched you throughout the summer, and as we've moved in, as you've helped plan for the year, already do amazing things. And so let's give a big hand to our student leaders in particular for the work they've done. So I just have a few minutes this morning, not only welcoming you to the school year, but also I get the pleasure of setting the stage for what the gathering or your chapel will look like this year. And so I wanna start with a question, which is really what my talk is about. Do you remember growing up, and maybe some of you think, well, I'm still growing up, so it could be now. Do you remember being asked lots of questions by your parents? You may have been asked, did you brush your teeth? Did you brush your hair? Did you hang up your clothes? Did you remember your lunch? You may have been asked, did you do your homework? Did you make your bed? I mean, these are common questions you get from your parents on a regular basis. Well, my dad used to ask me four consistent questions. Unfortunately, they were not any of those that I just shared. These were the questions he would ask me. What was the top score? Have you envisioned the ending? Have you put in the preparation? And then maybe the dreaded, did you do your best? These were consistent questions I heard. And I remember they would be questions when I might bring him a test grade, an 88, a 99%. And I'm not kidding, he would say, well, what was the top score you can make? He might even follow that up with, well, do you know who made the top score? And then tell me, how did they prepare for that? I might be working on a paper or a project, or it may have even been the very first day of school, and he would say to me, have you envisioned the ending? What is it going to look like? How do you want to feel? or in almost every conversation where I would share something that I needed to perform in. Maybe it was in the arts, maybe it was athletics, maybe it was a play or schoolwork. He would say, have you put in the preparation? And without fail, I would get the question more often than not, no matter what it might be about, did you do your best? I remember how irritating, quite frankly, these questions could be at times. I had moments where I would literally say to my mom, he really just asked me, what was the top score when I showed him a 99%? Or when he would say, have you envisioned the ending, I would get irritated because I may have just sat down to write my paper and I was staring at a blank sheet just trying to write the first sentence. There were times when the questions of have you put in the preparation or did you do your best would hit me poorly and in my head I would retort, well of course I did. But more often than not, more often than not, I was truly convicted by these questions. They were simple questions and they would prick me sometimes to the heart on what had I done to put in the effort. There were ways that moved me. If he had given me a lecture, it never would have moved me. Or if he just simply said, good job, it wouldn't have moved me. Or maybe if he'd shared disappointment, I'm not sure it would have moved me any more than if he'd asked me those critical questions. These questions made me grow. They made me think. And they made me consider for myself, where was I up against that question? He was prompting me one day to ask those questions of myself so he wouldn't have to ask them. Think about it. In these four simple questions, I was being forced to consider several things, such as excellence. Was there something else that I could have done to be prepared or something else I could have done to compete better? I was being encouraged to vision and plan before just starting something. Where do you want to be? Vision it. Had I considered the end and had I backward maps to get there. I was also encouraged quite frequently through the question, have you put in the preparation, to examine my own effort and my own attitude. Had I truly done all I could do? These questions, even though at times they irritated me, they did make me grow as a better thinker and a better person. 
And I'm going to tell you, oddly, they drew me closer to my father, even in that irritation. They almost always opened up a conversation. Instead of giving me an answer that closed it down, it opened up my next question. It opened up an engagement that went back and forth. That is why I am particularly excited about the engagement you will have this year on what I hope will be a journey of questions and growth. This year in the gathering at Lipscomb University and at Lipscomb Academy, you're going to be on a growth journey. At the Academy, you're studying seasons, and you're going to talk about questions that you ask and Jesus asked if it's during different seasons of your life. And at the university, we're going to be in a study of literally getting to engage with the most important questions ever asked, the questions Jesus asked us. These questions will change your life because the answers are a lifelong journey, journey of growth. For context, in the first books of the New Testament, the books we know as the Gospel, Jesus asked, I'm not kidding, over 300 questions. He's asked over 180, and he only answers three of those 180. It's full of questions, full of pondering, and here are just a few of them. If the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Or is your life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? What a great question. Maybe one of my favorites. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own? And maybe one of the questions he asked the most, he asked it primarily of the people who were closest to him, he asked, do you still not understand? A question we should continually ask ourselves. So why did Jesus ask all these questions? I actually think it's for the same reasons my father kept asking me all those consistent questions. It was probably because great teachers, really great teachers, are technically better questioners than they are answerers. They engage and they deepen and they push you to be on that lifelong journey of learning. Questions engage, they build relationship, they sharpen, they push thinking, they help you move. And so I believe that God wants us, through Jesus' question, to be on a forever journey of growth with him. He wants us to answer these questions through our own study and prayer and meditation. And of course, he wants us to do this in individual relationship with him. So as I close, you may have heard of a man named Peter Drucker. He is probably the modern um, forefather of the discipline of business management. He has said the most serious mistakes are not being made as a result of wrong answers. The true dangerous thing is asking the wrong questions. I had this question with my husband the other day. I was having a conversation and I said, you know, I think we will be asked more in heaven not about what we did do, but what we didn't even think to do. We weren't even asking the right questions. Jesus is helping us ask the right questions. He asked the most important questions. The questions we're going to ask this semester, like, what am I going to have at the CAF? Or am I going to go to Chick-fil-A? Or am I going to do that after class? Or am I going to join that social club or not? Or is my major going to be marketing or management? These are all good questions, but they're not the most important questions. The most important questions, the questions we should be asking, are who is my neighbor? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do what I say? Or why did you doubt? These are the most important questions that should lead our thinking this year, and I'm thrilled that will be our time together in chapel. 
I want to say thank you in advance today and every day for joining this journey with us at Lipscomb. I invite you, as we ask lots of questions, to engage and consider and maybe get a little bit uncomfortable, maybe pricked in the heart, maybe angry at times. But regardless, my prayer is that those moments will move you closer and closer to Jesus on your journey of growth. Because these questions, like who are you looking for? Or do you love me? Or maybe one of the most important ones, who do you say that I am? These are the most important questions we will ever answer. And as we engage, we will not only grow through this study, but our collective prayer this year is that that growth will turn into lifelong flourishing. Thank you. Will you please pray with me? Our Father in heaven, we have been challenged very powerfully this morning to grow and to flourish in that growing. And Father, you inspired Luke as he wrote the gospel to tell us this about Jesus. Jesus grew in wisdom, in physical stature, in favor with God, and in favor with man. And Father, what an exciting thing it is to anticipate that we are surrounded not by hundreds, but by th thousands of people who are who have chosen to be here and will be here this year, this academic year, getting to know each other, getting to be stretched, having the opportunity to be stretched academically, to learn how to take care of ourselves physically and to draw closer to you. And Father, I pray that we will grow and flourish. Every one of us will deep down in the, in the very depth of our heart, we determine that we want to be a part of those who grow and flourish and we'll do it in wisdom, intellectually, academically, in stature, physically, athletically, fun recreation, just taking better care of ourselves, nutrition, in favor with you, which is most important of all, to grow spiritually and to know you more and more and more. And also to create and to be blessed by countless new and continuing relationships. People that we love, our neighbors that we love and we get to know, and also people that maybe we just encounter, but to truly, to truly shine the light of Jesus. And we thank you in his name. Let's take a quick look at some highlights from this past year up until now. Video.
close our time together, as we've done in past years, we want to just share some quick hits of some things to look forward to this year. So if you'll turn your attention back to the screen before we close out our time. As we embark on this new school year, there's so much to be excited about. New experiences, new opportunities, and a shared journey of growth and discovery. Last week, we embarked on a new tradition in which every new undergraduate student received a purple Lipscomb Bible. This new tradition is a continuing testament to our Christ-centered mission and ongoing commitment to the spiritual formation of our students. This Bible will serve as a guide for our journey, both here and beyond. For those who love to stay active, the Lipscomb Intramural Field received an update this summer with new sod and new gate access, ensuring our students have priority access and a field that stays ready for our students. Next summer, even more improvement will be made to the field as we continue to support our growing intramural activity. This fall, we're adding a new pavilion on campus, a beautiful space designed for students to gather, study, and connect with friends. It's more than just a structure. It's a place where ideas will be shared, relationships will grow, and memories will be made. We can't wait to see it being built later this semester between Fanning and Collins. The steam plant, which provided heating services to campus for more than 60 years, was taken offline this summer and is being transformed into a theater, scene, and prop shop, providing students and faculty in the College of Entertainment and the Arts a new place to bring their artistic visions to life. What may be even better is that our campus is no longer being heated by the steam plant. This means we will have better heat control in High Rise, Sewell, and Allen Arena. Heading to the Academy, you will see a new Harding Hall entry. We absolutely love the lighted sign and new roof. Lipscomb Academy's football team is ready for action with a new head coach and the second game of the season being broadcast live across the country. The Academy also received its first million dollar endowment for the arts as it continues to stand out in this area. Drum roll, please. Allen Arena will have a new level of energy during basketball season with the debut of our new Lipscomb pep band, the Wild Bison. And this year, we're also celebrating an exciting milestone, the 100th anniversary of student government at Lipscomb. For a century, our student leaders have played a vital role in shaping the campus experience. And this year, we honor their legacy. Finally, this spring, students will have the opportunity to participate in one of Lipscomb's most beloved and longest running traditions, Singarama. Another drum roll, please. We're excited to announce that the theme for Singarama 2025 is movie premiere. We can't wait for you to be a star in our show. That's enough for now, but so much more is to come. Memories will be made as together we write the story of this new school year. Well, it's going to be a great year. And we hope it is a year that you will continue to grow and flourish. And to that end, we did want to end with a special gift. And by the way, this is not the end. The provost is actually the one who's going to end it. But this is exciting. Everyone is going to get a new Lipscomb t-shirt. So I think I have some friends that are helping me. cheerleaders let's give them a big hand I'm excited that you will all get new t-shirts that was not all of them I know that you are a little underwhelmed I promise that's not all of them as you leave today do not leave yet but as you leave today grab your t-shirt and we also have chocolate cupcakes for you to celebrate the 100 years of Student Government Association Academy Academy folks 
your cupcakes and your shirts are all back over at the Academy. So on your way back, you'll get both of those as well. And could I have my friends that have on their Lipscomb shirts, could y'all all stand? All right, turn around, turn around, turn around. All right, so don't forget your shirts, your Lipscomb shirts, and thank you for um, the folks who wore those here. I want to say again, thank you for all that you are doing to make this year a great year. Blessings on this 2024-25 school year, and now I'll turn it over to the provost to close us out. So now we will have the tolling of the bell. It's a tradition here at Lipscomb to toll the bell once for each decade that the school has been in existence. This is our 134th year, so today we will toll the bell 13 times. And now, <laughs> now as Chief Academic Officer of Lipscomb University, I declare the 134th academic year at Lipscomb officially open. At this time, Walt Lieber will close our program. Well, let me ask you, have you had a good time? We want to ask all the students to remain seated, but we'd like to ask those who are seated on the floor and those who are seated on the stage to stand in just a moment and the Nashville pipes and drums will lead the recessional. So we will let them begin and as soon as they come, take, go ahead and stand up and then follow them out. Follow the stage guest and then they will lead you out. <laughs> 